Watching this video on how to get a good latch every single time means that you will never have toe curling pain, you'll never have a sore, bleeding, or cracked nipple, and you'll probably have a happy, well-fed, content baby. Now how does that sound? Hi mommies, welcome to the Yellow Nursery. Today we are talking about how to get a good latch every single time. And I have my teaching doll with me today. This is Squishy. Squishy will join me in lots of my videos. Um, Squishy was named by one of the nurses at our pediatric clinic, Dion, who I love beyond words. Um, Dion calls every new baby Squishy. So that's how Squishy got its name. Um, one of the most important things we're just getting right into it, that you need to know is if at all possible, you can nurse within the first hour after giving birth, then by all means do it. And if you follow the instructions in this video on how to get a good latch from the very, very beginning, then things will be a lot more smooth sailing for you. So the first most important thing we need to talk about is how you're going to hold baby and what position you're going to hold baby in to be able to get that good latch and achieve that good latch without hurting any part of you. Okay, so there are two kinds of holds I would suggest for you to do. Cross cradle or football hold. So we're going to do cross cradle first. Cross cradle is like this and you have baby's head in your hand and then you will position this hand, the same side that you're going to breastfeed on, to support that breast, okay? Now, some easy ways for you to remember where to put all of the hands and the baby and everything. Just think to yourself, the same breast, the same side as the breast that I am going to nurse on, that same arm becomes an awkward chicken wing, okay? Sounds goofy, but it helps you to remember especially when you're tired and you have baby brain and you just had a baby and you're a little bit sore and there's a lot of things going on around you. The same side that you're nursing on, that arm becomes an awkward chicken wing, okay? That hand, you want to support that breast. The other hand, okay, helps to support baby's body and or that arm supports baby's body and this hand is in total control of baby's head okay how you hold on to baby's head is you use your thumb and your other fingers and you just gently support the back of baby's neck and head in your hand and this gives you total control to be able to move baby onto the breast quickly and efficiently okay now why do we do this why is cross cradle a good way? Because if you do cradle hold, this is traditional cradle hold, you can't move baby on very fast or efficient by shrugging a shoulder, okay? It's too difficult, especially in the beginning when you're trying to get a deep enough latch and not create a sore nipple by having too shallow of a latch to shrug a shoulder. So that's why we suggest doing cross cradle because you have all of this control with this head, baby's head in your hand and the ability to move fast and furious. And let me tell you, if you only get one thing from this video today, it's to be assertive and move fast and furious and to remember that your new baby is resilient and you can move them on there with wild abandon, okay? so. That's the first position. The second position is football hold. I like football hold if you have any size bust bigger than an A cup, and I'll tell you why. It's nice for mommy to be able to see into baby's mouth so that they can tell when baby's tongue is down and they're ready to latch on. Often it's hard when you've got cradle hold going on, whether it's cross cradle or traditional cradle hold, for a mommy to go like this and try to see in baby's mouth. 
football hold allows you to glance down your breast into baby's mouth. This way you can see when their tongue is down, their mouth is dropped open, and they're ready to latch on. A lot of mommies think that football hold means laying baby on their back beside you and having their tummy facing up towards the ceiling and putting your breast in their mouth. Really, it's better to have their tummy turn towards your side, take their little bottom and put it in the crook of your arm, kind of snug them up against you. That way you can hold their head in your hand and have full control of their little head between your thumb and your forefingers and you can place them on your breast the same way you did when you were doing cradle hold. You can support your breast with your other hand just like you did with cradle hold. See? But your arm is not an awkward chicken wing. It's a lot more comfortable this way. So those are the two holds I would suggest for first getting started. All right, cross cradle and football hold. All right, now that we've talked about the two different holds, we wanna talk about properly supporting your breast and getting a good angle so that when baby drops their little mouth open wide enough and you're ready to latch them on, you've got your breast supported well enough so that they can latch on properly. I see a lot of mommies doing this on their breast or a lot of mommies doing this on their breast, or a lot of mommies doing this on their breast and trying to put their breast in baby's mouth. The problem with this is your hand anywhere around here inhibits baby from getting a good latch on the breast because your fingers and your hands are in the way. So my suggestion would be to put your hand on your rib cage and to support your breast that way. Simply by moving your breast around like this with your hand on your rib cage allows you to angle your breast any way you might need to for baby to be able to latch on properly. What do you do if you have a really large size bust? A really good idea is to take a diaper or a small washcloth, roll it up and put it underneath your breast for some added support. That way you don't always have to be holding and supporting your breast with your hand. You can let go and there's that little rolled up piece of cloth to help support your breast when you can't. Now let's talk about what baby's mouth needs to look like before you try to place them onto your breast. Baby's mouth needs to be open as wide as possible and it needs to be tongue down over their bottom gums. Don't try to put baby on if their tongue is like this. Don't try to put baby on if they're doing this. Don't try to put baby on if they're doing this. Baby needs to have their little jaw dropped. How do you get baby to drop their jaw? This is a part that I find new mommies especially have a really hard time with. I'm going to use my special teaching breast model to show you exactly how you should rest your nipple on baby's mouth before you have to wait patiently for baby to drop their jaw. This is the easiest way for you to wait patiently and get baby to drop their jaw so that you can then get them to latch on deep enough so that they won't cause you any pain. Rest your nipple right here on baby's bottom lip or closer to their chin. This will then get baby to drop their jaw just like this. If you wait patiently, I see a lot of mommies doing this. <laughs> Honestly, all that does is confuse baby. It also makes them do this rooting reflex and so you've got baby looking all over the place like this, like this, and it's just frustrating for mommy because then you throw the hands in and it just makes it really, really hard for baby to latch on and for mommy to feel like she can get baby to latch on and have everything coordinated. It also makes mommy feel like she needs 12 hands to breastfeed. So again, just gently rest your nipple right here on baby's bottom lip or close to their chin and wait patiently. When baby drops their jaw and you see that their tongue is down over their bottom gums, then is the time to try to latch them on. Next we'll go over how to latch them on without any pain. 
For this segment on how to latch the baby on, I'm using my little goofy teaching puppet and my little stuffed breast model. This is so that you can see really how baby should latch on, what their lips should look like, and how deep they should get onto the breast with the nipple and the areola. So when baby latches on, of course you want their mouth open wide. We talked about them dropping their jaw and their tongue down. When baby latches on, you don't want baby to latch on like this and kind of slurp onto the breast like they're sucking on a little piece of spaghetti or sucking on a straw. That is wrong and it will hurt you. That is what causes mommies to have sore, cracked, bleeding nipples. What you want is baby's mouth to open wide and then you want to move baby on as fast as you can so that that whole areola and nipple is stuffed in their little mouth as wide and as deep as you can get it. And then you want baby's little lips flanged out so that they can nurse on the breast in a rotary jaw movement. Let me show you with my mouth. You don't want baby to nurse or latch on like this. You want baby to latch on like this. You want both lips flanged out and you want baby to get on as deep as possible. When a baby nurses on a breast, you want them to again, like I said, do a rotary jaw movement like this. You don't ever want baby to suck like this on a breast. If a baby sucks like this on a breast, that's what will cause fissures, cracks, and injuries all around the nipple area. But if you can get a baby latched on to suck like a rotary jaw movement, they will be on deep enough onto the breast with their little lips flanged out that all of this nipple and areola area will be way, way back into the back of their mouth which is soft and cushiony and it won't cause mommy any injury. When baby latches on, make sure that baby's lips are flanged out and are all the way back here. Make sure that baby does that rotary jaw movement and is not sucking like this on the end of your nipple. Make sure that baby's mouth is open wide enough that when they latch on, you can get them deep onto the breast. This is how you want baby to look. Lips flanged out and them latched on back here, not here. Now I'm going to use Squishy again and I'm going to show you what I call <laughs> stuffing baby on the breast with wild abandon. This is the part that's really hard for new mommies to kind of grasp the concept, but it is the part that will save your bacon every single time. This is the part where when baby drops their jaw, you need to stuff them on as fast and as furious with wild abandon as you can. This is the part that allows you to get as much nipple and areola in baby's mouth as you possibly can. So I've got baby in cross cradle. I have all of the control that I need to be able to move baby on as fast as I need to. I'm supporting my breast with my awkward chicken wing arm and I'm angling my breast a little bit upward so that I can then put baby on when I need to. I am just placing my nipple on baby's chin and waiting patiently. When baby opens its mouth, I am going to move baby on that fast. Do you see how I've stuffed baby's entire little face into my breast? That's as fast as you need to move. Don't worry, baby will be able to breathe once you get baby on and they start to suck. All you have to do is tuck their little bottom closer to your body and it will easily free a place for their nose to breathe. The mechanism of you tucking their bottom is what actually frees their nose if you watch. See? So again, waiting patiently, babies right there and as soon as they drop their jaw, stuff them on fast. 
Let's show it in football hold. Waiting patiently. As soon as they drop their jaw, stuff baby on fast, deep. As soon as they get going, then you can adjust everything. When you're doing it in cross cradle, you don't have to keep this awkward chicken wing the entire time. As soon as you get baby on and you get everything adjusted, then you can take this awkward chicken wing and gently bring it around and be more comfortable. Now, a few more tips and tricks. How should you angle your breast for baby to easily latch on? Here's my rule. I call it the sandwich rule. When you eat a sandwich, you don't place the sandwich in your mouth like this, and you don't place the sandwich in your mouth like this, and you don't place the sandwich in your mouth like this. But you place the sandwich in your mouth like this. So think about placing your breast in the baby's mouth that way. When you think about latching baby onto the breast, think about angling your breast with the nipple slightly angled up, a little towards the roof of their mouth, just like you'd eat a sandwich. Think of eating a big sloppy sandwich that you're trying to get into your mouth as gracefully as possible. If the nipple's angled up, then when you latch baby on, it's easier that way to get baby on and get more in baby's mouth. So when you are holding onto and supporting your breast down by your rib cage, think about which way you want to angle and support your breast, depending on whether you're holding baby cradle hold or football hold and angle your nipple up a little bit towards the roof of baby's mouth so that when you're holding baby's head, and you put baby's head onto your breast, it's like they're eating a sandwich. Let's talk about what you should do if you get baby latched on and it does hurt. It's toe curling pain, it's killing you, tears are rolling down your face, what do you do? You need to break the suction immediately and make baby latch on again the right way. This might take you two or three tries. It might take you 12 or 13 tries. The most important thing to do is to take baby off and make them do it again and take them off and make them do it again. And that way, as soon as you get it right and you leave them on, then baby is practicing nursing the right way you're not in pain or being caused any injury and that way you and baby will both have a good experience but baby will also remember how they were nursing and then the next time it'll be easier and the next time even easier so how do you break the suction once you've gotten baby on if it's hurting have your finger right there and available to be able to break the suction a lot of people say the easiest way to break the suction is to take your finger and stick it in the corner of baby's mouth between their two gums. I find that babies can still suck your breast and your finger at the same time. And I see mommies trying to do this and they're going, ow, 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 and they're still having baby suck the breast and the finger and there's still toe curling pain and everything seems to be a little bit crazy. So what I have found over the last 20 years is to do what I call the Elvis lip. Elvis Presley was famous for doing this. I have found that if you just gently do this to baby's top lip, it breaks the suction immediately and you can take them off. So if you will be ready with that finger and if baby gets latched on too shallow and it hurts you at all, you just simply push their little top lip up like Elvis and it breaks the suction. Then you can try again to get them latched on the right way. Simply, if it's hurting, break the suction, do the Elvis lip, try again to get them latched on the right way. If it's hurting, simply pull their little top lip up like Elvis, break the suction, try again to get them latched on the right way. If it's hurting, simply reach down with your index finger, pull their little top lip up like Elvis, break the suction, take them off, try again to get them latched on the right way without it hurting. 
I found this to be far more effective than in the corner of the mouth. And it's easy to remember, just think of the king and do the Elvis lip. Another thing that you need to know is, once you have baby latched on, it's really important that you can draw an imaginary line from their ear to their shoulder to their hip. If you can draw that imaginary line and baby is tummy to tummy, then it won't hurt you or cause you any injury. Think of it this way. If I have a milkshake and I hold it out here and I tell you to drink it and you turn your head and try to drink it, you're always gonna be swallowing in an awkward way. And your instinct is going to be to pull your head back and line your body up. Just turn your head right now to the side and try to swallow. It's awkward. So our instinct is to cradle these little sweet babies on their back and look into their lovely face. But then if we turn their head to nurse and the rest of their body is turned away from us, think of what they'll be doing. It's just like the milkshake. They're constantly going to be trying to turn their head to the side and line their body up. So we need to line their body up for them, tummy to tummy, so that you can draw the imaginary line from their ear to their shoulder to their hip so that it's easy for them to swallow. So once you get baby all latched on, Remember, head in the hand, move fast and furious, shove them on deep, get as much in their mouth as possible. As soon as they start sucking in that rotary jaw movement, if it doesn't hurt, you've made it. Then stop and think, okay, is baby's nose free? Let me tuck their little bum closer to free their nose up so they can breathe. Is baby ear, shoulder, and hip lined up so that they are comfortable and they're not gonna hurt me, great. Do I have an awkward chicken wing arm because I'm doing cross cradle? Let me put that around so I can be comfortable. All of these things will make your life a lot easier and will be a lot more comfortable for baby. Thanks for joining me today in the Yellow Nursery. I hope these tips have helped you. Remember, it doesn't have to hurt. Come back and see me again. I look forward to seeing you. Bye. Bye.